Hi, I'm Alvin Castro, and today I'll be talking about how to use the Network Analytics Engine IPSLA script with thresholds. Before continuing on to the script, let's first talk about the IP service level agreement. IPSLA is an active method of monitoring and reliably reporting on network performance by generating protocol specific traffic. The advantages of using IPSLA with a network analytics engine include the ability to provide continuous measurements, edge to edge network availability monitoring, precise measurements specific to protocols, and threshold based alerts when receiving results. The NAE script monitors metrics of pre-configured sessions and sources and permits different types of thresholds and actions. The IPSLA feature requires a minimum software version of AOS CX 10.2. You can use IPSLAs to monitor the performance between any areas of the network without deploying a physical probe. It uses generated traffic to measure network performance between two networking devices. In this example diagram, IPSLA sessions begin when the source device sends a generated packet to the destination device. After the destination device receives the packet, depending on the type of IPSLA operation, it responds with timestamp information for the source to make the calculation on performance metrics. Depending on the session type, you can utilize a responder, a web service, or really any IP device as targets to measure network health and responses. For this particular script, the IPSLA sessions are required to be created prior to creating an agent. When creating an IPSLA session, you have the capability to specify a source and a responder, and you have the option of choosing between various IPSLA types. ICMP Echo measures the end-to-end -end response time by measuring the time between sending an ICMP Echo request message to the destination and receiving that ICMP Echo reply. UDP Echo does the connectivity testing of transport layer devices and measures the round trip time and packet loss details. TCP Connect measures the response time taken to perform a TCP Connect operation and measures the round trip time and packet loss. The IPSLA VoIP UDP jitter operation can simulate voice traffic by using common codecs and UDP traffic that are similar to real voice over IP traffic. The VoIP UDP jitter operation can return two additional numerical values that will rate the voice quality, the MOS or mean opinion score, and ICPIF, the calculated planning impairment factor. The HTTP operation measures the round trip time between the switch and an HTTP server to retrieve a web page. The HTTP server response time measurements consist of three types, DNS lookup, TCP connect, and HTTP transaction time. There are many more SLA types that can be measured. For more information as to what other options are specific to your model and firmware, please look at our IPSLA configuration guide. Before jumping into the web UI for the NAE, let's look at configuring an IPSLA session. Currently, I have several different session types on my switch. A couple use the UDP jitter VoIP operation, I have an ICMP echo operation, uh, a couple of TCP connect operations, and a few of these utilize a responder on a downstream AOS switch device. I'll briefly show you what the responder code looks like on one of the AOS switch 2930Ms I have downstream from that AOS CX device. Now let's create a new IPSLA session for this demo. I'll name it HTTP and have the responder send probes to a local web server. Notice that even after I created the IPSLA session and gave it the details, I'll still need to tell it to start the test in order for the session to start the sending probes. Now that we created the session, let's get to the network analytics engine. We can see that I already have an agent created from the script, but it is monitoring an entirely different IPSLA session. I'll create a new agent that will monitor my newly created IPSLA session. 
The IPSLA script with Thresholds Agent has several customizable parameters. All of these options for the parameters can be seen when clicking the question mark in the description of each. For the action command parameter, when an agent creates an alert, you can make the script run a CLI command, create a syslog message, run both the CLI command and create a syslog message, or you can schedule another IPSLA session to start. I'll leave this at the default log for now. Next we'll specify the IPSLA session name. This is why we need to create the session first, since the script will error out if it cannot find the specified IPSLA session. For the threshold field, we can have the alert condition be based to the average de destination to source delays, the average round trip time, average source to destination delays, maximum round trip time, minimum round trip time, VoIP MOS scores, and the number of packets received. For the threshold type, we can trigger the alert when the monitor value is greater than the threshold specified as the immediate upper, or lower than the threshold specified as the immediate lower, or raise an alert based on whether the alert continuously passes the threshold for a given period of time, or when the average over the given duration passes the threshold over the given duration. Finally, we set the threshold value as an integer. Based on what's being monitored, the customizability of the script allows for several different ways to trigger alerts and what actions will be taken. For this script that, we measure, that will be measuring the web server, I'll make an alert occur once the response time measurements are higher than 45 seconds. Just like that, we've created a monitor for the IPSLA session. While this is just building the history of data, let me look at another agent that has been monitoring the VoIP MOS between the AOS CX switch and that AOS switch with VoIP devices and traffic running through it. Looking at the parameters here, we're having it check if the MOS scores get below 1. If we navigate to a point in time where an alert occurred, we can see some of the actions that were taken. We can see that it made a syslog event. It ran the CLI command to retrieve the IPSLA results. And it also created this custom HTML analysis report, which contains the SLA results and information. This is how the agent automatically gathers data when anomalies occur. And we can even see the results for all all other IPSLA operations on the device at that time. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget to ask any questions on our Airheads Developer Community Forum, and be sure to check out other videos on the Airheads Broadcasting Channel.